Welcome to the CPTM Smapanas Hub open house. It's an extended open house uh, by the way of the and uh, as a contribution to Commonwealth Summit 2018 Commonwealth Summit in UK which was a very successful Commonwealth Summit and we think that it was uh, successful also because of the marathon and most successful uh, CPTM open house webcast and interactions uh, for about um, at least six or seven days. So yesterday, for instance, um, the uh, joint, uh, the co-presidents of the Club of Rome um, uh, wanted to launch the latest report um, in Chatham House, which is a well-known think tank and so on. But before they went there, they came here. So uh, we discussed quite in detail about the resonance between the smart partnership approach, this is what Ernst was saying, and the new um, uh, approach that within the Club of Rome uh, in relation to uh, particularly the, the their main preoccupation, the destruction of the planet uh, mm -hmm. was all about. So, uh, but really I think today, today's Friday, uh, 27th of April, I think probably it is time for us to close the Commonwealth Summit Open House and probably uh, we may decide to have an ongoing kind of Open House, but as far as Commonwealth Summit is concerned, today will be the end of the Commonwealth uh, Summit Open House from Smart Partners. So, thank you very much uh, Jenny for, uh, Jennifer for coming to the hub uh, <coughs> when, as we were mentioning a minute ago, when we say Malta and small states, we said Jennifer Tassin-Jena <laughs> and Malta Council for Science Technology and the region and everything else we've done in Malta. And uh, <coughs> of course your many interventions you made in the last few years. Um, but uh, also thank very much to Luke, Professor Luke Gergioiu, and congratulations to look that we just found out you became deputy president of the University of Manchester. And you assured us that Graffin is still with you. So uh, uh, Namibians were here the other day. They didn't have time, but they wanted Hank Skuman. They wanted to pop into Manchester to see where you are. But um, <coughs> I thank you very much for coming. And. Uh, you are also a companion, you are a networking <laughs> founder, so, and Nick is with us, so I suppose just maybe we have a few words about, of course, leveraging the value of data, but within the context of Manchester or context of Malta and... Uh, Shall we start with Luke or with... Uh, so we'll probably Luke. will look, <laughs> right, please, look. Okay, well, uh, let me first say that uh, <laughs> Uh, as we've just been discussing, it's uh, 35 years this year since my first engagement with the predecessors oh, of, of yeah. CPTM. And, uh, in the our, Caribbean. Our, uh, yeah, in the, our first project, it, it was in the Caribbean called mm. uh, uh, Randival. It was mm -hmm. uh, uh, an, an expert system at the core of it to, to e evaluate research and development surrounded by a lot of other e evaluation Activity. So it was I, an artificial I, intelligence. So I suppose exactly. We were already thirty-five years it's ago incredible. In, in, incredible. In, 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 the, in the domain of, 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 of AI. It's quite something. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't think I think it was very many years before anything similar f f f followed that. Mm -hmm. But also just moving more and more directly into the, the science policy of the countries yeah. concerned, the the major deficit we discovered was in data. People yeah. didn't know where, where they were, so how could they plan to go forward? And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of our first tasks was to uh, uh, advise and with some o ODA support, put in the first uh, IT systems for some of these mm -hmm. countries in, in science policy. Mm -hmm. So that was... Uh, they were the first, actually, yeah. computers in yes. every island, even now they're talking about it. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. It, it often shows you that you, you can have a central focus of a project but sometimes the side benefits can turn oh, out to be right. to be more yeah. more important. Yeah, but the main so. side benefit was yes, the emergence yeah. of the network. Yes, I suppose. Indeed, uh, today and yeah. uh, still still a few people in the network from those well, days. I mean, so Lennox, are still Louis, are key and people in, in the organisation. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. it shows that these things also persist. Yeah, 
-hmm. So uh, today, uh, yeah. again, you know, we've had a whole a whole morning just discussing the the the, mm -hmm. the huge challenges and opportunities in da in data science mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. um, and and where we stand. I mean, it's it's absolutely vital for my university and the people mm -hmm. we work with, but. Uh, we, CPTM offers a, a, a really interesting dimension of, of how this is rolling out in, in, in mm -hmm. Commonwealth countries, and mm -hmm. particularly uh, in, in Africa. The uh, Central Bank Governors Group have been huge pioneers in, yeah. in this area, really exciting work. Yeah, and um, I, I, the idea that we, it was, was pioneered in the uh, Car Caribbean in, uh, through Roundabout, through the program, was also the approach, the interface between the scientist or the science policy uh, uh, people in UK and uh, similar ones in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. irrespective of the kind of uh, fact that it's small island yes. and uh, a developing country and developed country and so on. So the expert system, for instance, had this consortium uh, between ESRC and DSIR in New Zealand and uh, Cariri in Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was not a developed country to a developing country. It was a kind of uh, different approach, and that is still today. Yes, you know? I mean, yeah. it's, um, maybe after a very big circle, we've come mm -hmm. round to a similar way of doing things, yeah. at least in this country, with the Global Challenges Research Fund. Uh -huh. Which okay. seeks to can you mention a bit more about well, that? Uh, well, th this yeah. this is a, a a fund which seeks to um, connect largely partners in the global south with uh, researchers across the whole uh, the whole front mm -hmm. in this country uh, mm -hmm. applying wh whichever mm -hmm. area of science or, or social mm -hmm. science that they're engaged with to to the challenges mm -hmm. of those countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, how is graphene? You have to tell us how is the graphene. <laughs> how is graphene? Gra graphene, graphene is fine. It's it's uh, reached a very interesting stage now where we're. Ivan really is still there. Yeah, so yes, yes, of course, of okay. course. Uh, uh, Ivan is a very important part okay. of our picture. But uh, um, uh, through the work of uh, Ivan and his colleagues, we're seeing graphene appearing uh, with more and more frequency in in, in tangible industrial products. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, any we, any connection more substantial between the uh, those who are exposed, uh, both in Dar es Salaam uh, and uh, here a few times? I mean, there was a lot of yes, interest. Yes, yes, I think we, we, we've we've had but, some uh, some mm -hmm. some visits and, and mm -hmm. exchanges, and, and work is still going on. And uh, because Namibia is still yes. wishing to do much more than just exposure. I'm bit, sure, uh, and in, yeah. you know, I mean, in in some ways, you know, graphene is. is is at the, the most advanced end of science, but in other ways, it, it can be used to enhance very regular and everyday products. You know, there may, there's some tires on offer now with, with yeah. graphene content, which improves its material pro properties and durability, heat management, uh, and so on. So, it's similar with yeah. AI, with artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. because yeah, there is a lot going on research of a kind where you require infrastructure and science capability and all mm -hmm. the rest of it. But um, there are these applications of AI machine learning to audit, as we yes. were, be, which are kind of as valid and possible mm. in um, developing emerging yes. country economy as they are here. So mm. it's, it's the same kind of, um, yeah. So I'm, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, look, if you if you were to think in terms of uh, you said 37 years since uh, first time. Well, let's say in about 20 years' time, not necessarily 37 from now on. No, I mean, yeah, no, I, I no mean, what? For me for no, I mean, no, 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 no. We're not talking about the individuals, but we're talking about how do you think the issue of data might emerge? Because uh, the, the research, the teaching, the everything else is slightly different. Or will become fundamentally different, yeah. The way we communicate, of course, in the yes. last few years is a big difference between 
uh, 37 years. Yeah, I mean, now. Uh, there, but how is likely to evolve? There are many, mm -hmm. there are many <laughs> competing visions of the future. At, at one extreme, we have people in the in, in the sort of singularity uh -huh, view, uh -huh. view of the yeah, world, yeah, which yeah, sees as I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, I've no doubt that the data revolution will con continue to reach into mm -hmm. all aspects mm -hmm. of our lives, but uh, I don't think it's a question of simple extrapolation, and Different. we will have to get a much stronger grip of the social and political dimensions it's of it. probably horizontal yes. or yes. diagonal yes. kind of... Yes. Uh, yeah. disruption that will take yeah. place. I mean, in a way, the, bigger, Transformation. the biggest research challenge is probably for social scientists rather than for Isn't data it? scientists. Yeah, so. Actually, I'm not very sure if the yeah. social scientists will remain social <laughs> well, they're scientists. Well, they're both. Data they are data scientists, scientists of course, but yes. those aspects yeah. all data scientists will yeah. have to engage with. I mean, we had in the last uh, few yeah. months, and particularly last week, we had this um, um, new uh, preoccupation with uh, uh, si spotting signals for tomorrow, mm -hmm. today. So uh, we started at the AGM, but uh, and it was very relevant. It's an ongoing kind of uh, uh, discussion, I suppose. I um, this last week at the open house, mm -hmm. we uh, <coughs> brought in this group who was with us, but he's from Switzerland. He's a group of very young people, that's the reason why I'm mentioning, uh, who about a few years ago were brought in by UBS and Sarasan mm -hmm. Bank and so on and sponsored to come up with not trends and beyond just foresight mm -hmm. or horizon scanning. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were very well endowed to do that. There were about seven of them. With, they could get data from wherever they wanted. And uh, they develop actually, uh, they just uh, talked about, it's called Navigator. And um, uh, Stephen, Stephen Zixley presented mm -hmm. that uh, last week on uh, Wednesday. And um, it sounds very promising. But what we don't understand is um, what is the difference between this tool or approach and the foresight and the other forecasting mm -hmm. methodologies. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's next. Mm -hmm. And probably it will be very interesting to involve you in that because mm -hmm. you are involved in even setting up the whole mm -hmm. foresight capability and so on, in not mm -hmm. only here but also in Europe. Yeah, well, I mean, you're mentioning weak signals. I think this is the most interesting area of foresight, and yeah. it's, it's very difficult to build a methodology around them because you, you never know whether a signal mm -hmm. is, is telling something or, or whether it isn't. Mm -hmm. But I... I, I remember giving a, a talk some years ago to a, a group of uh, industry forecasters and uh, I, I had two two slides I mean the, the first one came from I mean, we, we happened to be driving past Stonehenge and we, yeah. we stopped there <laughs> and, and I took a photo of a druid with a yeah. with a banner and the, the question I, w I was giving to the industrialist for that is you know will 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 these the, the idea of the natural world as a focus for religion return uh, <laughs> uh, as, as sustainability yeah, yeah. arises. So that was mm -hmm. one thing. And then in the same week, I saw a, a clipping just in my local newspaper that a, an, an unknown group had gone through a, a suburb of Manchester slashing the tyres of large four-wheel drive vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah. uh, there were a lot of car, yeah. car industry people yeah. in, in my audience. They were, mm -hmm. And... Uh, in a way, you could say that nothing much happened, but actually there has been a, a very strong yeah. pushback against the use of vehicles in cities. Yeah. We're now seeing yeah. clean yeah. zones, mm -hmm. uh, aims for low-carbon cities, mm -hmm. huge taxes on the mm -hmm. kind of vehicles that, that were... So maybe, um, you know, uh, urban eco-terrorism has, has not really emerged, but the forces that uh -huh. underpin that signal yeah, 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 have clearly gone into mainstream so, politics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. So, mm -hmm. the, so whatever, whatever name one would give to this yeah. tool or the approach, yes. yeah. uh, because this is what this group is mm -hmm. uh, kind of tri pioneering, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, Jennifer, 
Yeah, right? how, how is uh, <laughs> how is Malta Council the science technology and the interface with Europe, with European yes. community? Because oh, well, there's a lot of Cyprus interesting. Yes, thing. we've had yes. some interesting developments. I mean, last year was a very challenging one because we had the presidency of uh, of the of the EU for the first six months. But you were also up to about last week. Yes, chair, chair of the Commonwealth. <coughs> yes, as well, so as well. So a lot of challenging yeah. things. Yeah. I mean, I think there's um, on the on the data and blockchain. There's mm -hmm. some interesting developments mm -hmm. as well um, at the university. Um, mm -hmm. I think partly um, it's linked to the legacy. You know, of um, you remember when we had the uh, Vision 2000 yes. conference yes. in Malta way back. Yeah, it was incredible. That was and all those networks that were set up. And it was you know, again quite avant-garde. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we 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 I, I've stayed a little bit in contact with the people there um, in the AI department, and mm -hmm. I know they are working. Uh, they're, they're very active at the moment on a, on launching an, a master's program on blockchain, mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. the legal aspects of mm -hmm. it. Um, so they'll be so launching that Nick, quite soon. So you can perhaps, go to uh, Absolutely, you, and um, I can put you in contact yes, with, be very you know, with Gordon. No, and there, there's uh, a great way to, to bring a group, a network of lawyers. Yeah. Then we can send them to Malta. <laughs> I think it could be very... Or we can launch it in Malta, yeah. the link, the Malta. Yeah, yeah, it could be interesting, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, and then the other thing which is, I, I think, interesting with the data, I've been doing a bit of research at the moment for uh, a, a study which, I, which I'm, I'm working on for the, for the EU, which is looking at foresight exercises on implementing the sustainable development goals mm -hmm. and um, when I reviewed all the literature what I was getting was it's a it's a very complex task and it, it the, the main kind of uh, activities which have been held have been more trying to bring all the modelers together mm -hmm. and, and getting the modelers to talk to each other mm -hmm. um, which is a huge challenge um, at the same time, um, an interesting approach which um, they seem to be taking forward is kind of um, how can we address what they call nexus fields. So, for example, migration, which seems to hit so many issues. How can we is tackle, migration, tackle migration, migration as a nexus field, yeah. which hits on so many of the SDGs as a kind of cause of, yeah. of the SDGs? So, um, and trying to find out. Um, what could be the added value of, of foresight activity at European level uh -huh. um, uh, in terms of you know what already is being done by the UN, by mm -hmm. OECD, by World Bank, mm -hmm. you know. OECD um, is uh, more on indicators. Useful, yeah, I mean, yeah, OECD is is, uh, is more kind of but um, actually, statistical. Um, actually, they uh -huh. undertook under their umbrella to launch various quite. Uh, various things, particularly to do with uh, cyber security and security. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this Chatham House Canada report mm -hmm. uh, study, which was... Yeah, um, it was reminding me a bit as yeah, well yeah. of um, integrated... You remember when we were discussing the, the inter Malta, yes. integrated resource management with the German ambassador yeah, exactly. at the time, Martin Florin, and... What are we... This is know? what we're talking today about. Yeah. It's so incredible. how to bring all this data yes. together yes. and, yes. Um, you know, and how, incredible. like you said, what foresight and horizon scanning can contribute mm -hmm. to all this. I mean, Probably do we go for business as usual that. scenarios? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking at the kind of scenarios that have been, um, you know, developed and mainly they seem to be business as usual or there's a kind of dynamics as usual scenario mm -hmm. uh, where you know, you have an improvement on the business as usual, mm -hmm. but then kind of how can we make that shift from business as usual to kind mm -hmm. of more green mm -hmm. approaches, yeah, yeah, more yeah. societal, mm -hmm. societally driven so approaches? It would be interesting you know? to kind of listen to Ernst, Vice ah, yeah, but the, the book is a bit heavy, uh, everybody knows about it. Uh, when you look at the title, it sounds like a manifesto, come on, but in fact uh -huh. it's quite a solid Mm -hmm. German Swedish mm -hmm. uh, treaty, but uh, it's, it's, it's would, useful. Yes, I would, it's I very, would definitely very look because I was looking at the follow up to the Club mm -hmm. of Rome report. Yes, uh, yes, yes, which has yeah. which came out, and yeah, yeah. I was trying to yeah. see yeah. sort of uh, how what direction <coughs> can be taken. I mean, there was a lot of discussion on the circular economy, 
yes, good, quite yes, very, very, very good, mm -hmm. actually, by the mm -hmm. economist, who was actually um, part of Science Policy Foundation with Goldsmith, mm -hmm. Stahel. Oh, yes. You remember mm -hmm. Stahel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is his book around there yeah. about circular economy. He became a global member. Yeah, okay. He's very, very active, yeah. Anyway, here we are, I mean, kind of, uh, uh, I suppose uh, uh, the weather is not as nice as it was <laughs> last week, but the strawberries survived the weather, <laughs> and the, the yeah. British They're strawberries. So <laughs> on this uh, note, probably we should uh, just uh, congratulate everyone for the uh, CPTM open house, and um, we probably wait for taking forward.